Welcome everyone <laughs> to the Auburn City Council meeting on June 17th, 2024. Um, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Member Dalton Calvillo. Present. Amara. Uh, present. Holmes. Sarah Sammons. Present. And Mayor Riddell Harris. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilman Holmes, would you believe us in the pledge, please? Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to be moving on to public comment. This is a time provided so that the public may speak to the council on any item that is not on the agenda. Please make your comments as brief as possible. Is there anyone here for public comment? Menjil? are dying to say something to us okay Madam mayor i, I yes. do have just a quick public comment yes um i wanted to request that at our next meeting or the meeting after depending on the availability i thought it might be appropriate for us to honor or to, and to give our thanks to the two young women who identified the uh, individual who set fire to the echo valley hay truck yep and their uh bravery and uh, willingness to step up um, is incredibly uh, brave and um, very appreciative because that could have been a huge disaster if the truck had burnt and then Echo Valley. So um, we've done that in the past with folks, kind of a, a hero's uh, commendation. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to give them recognition for, so, um, um, I can work with Andy to, or Andy, with Amy to Amy, see that, yeah. <laughs> where they, that came there, from. <laughs> um, there was an article in the newspaper that identified the two women and I forgot to bring it with me, but it would be great. I mean, obviously, the average. I think they worked with PD, so PD might know who they are. Yes, they did, because they actually followed the person. Followed yeah. the individual suspect and, and apprehended him, so to speak, until the, the cops could arrive. So really did their due diligence and appreciate them going above and beyond. Police, yep. police officers. Yes, the police officers mm -hmm. apprehended him. <laughs> oh, that sounds, I, I'm totally fine with doing that. Right. We'll work that into uh, one of our upcoming agendas. Sounds Thank great. You. Is there any other public comment from the council? Okay, and none for, I don't see any from the audience. So we're gonna move on to item number two, a resolution of the city council of the city of Auburn declaring a fiscal emergency. Oops. See if I can do this without blocking that back. Kind of. All right, so uh, in your packet, thank you, Madam Mayor, in your packet, you have a staff report and a draft res and a resolution for council consideration uh, regarding the proposed uh, fiscal emergency. I'll run through the staff report for the benefit of uh, folks in the audience and those online too. So during the June 10th, we've been we've been processing through our um, fiscal issues and trying to work through budget. Uh, we uh, presented the um, fiscal year 24-25 proposed budget on June 10th to council. That budget reflected a reduced budget deficit of 1.1 million, down from 1.9 million. Uh, during the previous proposed uh, draft budgets uh, that included budget reductions associated with a hiring freeze, unfunding and freezing four full-time positions, and then also efforts taken by department heads to reduce the requested budgets. Um, those solutions for closing the fiscal year 24-25 budget shortfall remain the same, uh, but with less general fund reserves being required to close the gap. So as you'll remember, uh, at the meeting before that, we had council give direction to reallocate ARPA money and then also use reserves as much as we needed to re re use reserves. So these latest cuts brought us down to where we didn't need as much of the reserves to be used. Um, although those actions taken to balance the fiscal year 24-25 budget close that one-year gap, they don't address the ongoing deficit projections, which remain significant. Um, using the city's reserves to close the budget gap for fiscal year 24-25 will result in an additional 3.7 drop in the city's general fund reserves after a previous drop of 27.7% percent presented at the fiscal year 23-24 mid-year financial update for a combined drop in reserves of more than 31% since July 1st, 20, 2023. Uh, city's reserves will fall below the city council's reserve policy of 30% to 26% of the general fund estimated annual expenses. At this time, we're projecting a structural deficit of about 825,000, I believe. 
cities enter into various memorandum of understanding with uh, the various units that we have. All of those MOUs between the city and the different employee bargaining units include a provision that states during the term of this agreement, this is in quotes, during the term of this agreement in the event the city declares a fiscal emergency and the city's total general fund reserves decrease 25% or more below existing levels as of July 1st, 2023, any remaining subsequent salary increase shall be canceled. And at the uh, um, last council meeting, council gave direction to us in closed session to bring forward the fiscal emergency uh, resolution that you have before you right now. Assuming that council moves forward with the adoption of the resolution, that would cancel the upcoming raises that take effect July 1st. That total amount would be 225,000 dollars, I believe, ish. 235,114 dollars. So you have the draft resolution in front of you. Um, staff's recommend recommendation is to adopt that resolution which will then declare the fiscal emergency and cancel the upcoming raises um, that are part of the MOUs. I can answer questions if you have them. Finance director is on Zoom. She's not feeling it well, but um, she did uh, Zoom in for us tonight. Thank you for that. Uh, Councilor, are there any questions? Just to confirm, um, Sean, <clears throat> the this would establish the canceling of the of the salary increases. It would not kick them down the road or defer them or continue it would just it would just cancel them null and void is the language re, the language cancels the increase it doesn't defer them okay thank you there's also a provision that relates to sick leave buybacks and that this would prevent that staff's not recommending that we pursue that and we just leave that uh, as it is not um, cancel the buyback of sick leave as well um, the the resolution only is specific to the canceling of the raises as part of the fiscal emergency. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. City Manager, this if we do find a way to get out of the fiscal situation that we're in over the next six months or so, is there an opportunity for us to at least find some way to help move us in the direction of the salaries that some of our staff lost? Can we still, if what, how, how long does this emergency last? Can we end it whenever we want? And when we end it, is there a possibility if we have the financial ability to make at least some movement in the direction of the salaries that were promised? Is there a possibility of doing that if that works financially for us? I don't see any reason why council couldn't do that. The The action cancels the raises, right, in perpetuity. The, the MOUs all come back up July 1st of 2025. Uh, which is so we'll be start negotiations with the employee units sometime in spring of next year anyway. Um, our intent is to obviously we don't want to bring forward another budget for 25, 26, not this upcoming year, but the next. That's going to rely on any kind of reserves to balance again because eventually if we continue to do that, but this $825,000 structural deficit, the reserves eventually get depleted if we do that. And so yeah. we certainly aren't going to do that. We need to take actions to resolve. Uh, the deficit that we, the structural deficit as quickly as we can, and then look at kind of recalibrating what we're doing as city. Um, if down the road we're able to, as part of the next contract or even before that, provide raises, then that would be a, an action that council could take. Okay. Um, at this point, though, we're, we're just currently looking at what are we going to do to resolve the, the structural deficit as quickly as possible. Okay. So because these raises would go into effect July 1st and there's not much time between now and then this would fix the problem in the meantime. But if we found, if we were able to fix some of the structural issues and over the next few months, then we could talk about other opportunities for um, staff getting sure. those right. raises, at least a portion of the raises that were promised. Right. And, and to be clear, this declaring the fiscal emergency and canceling these upcoming raises doesn't fix a problem because although we're saving 225, $235,000 uh, in raises for the upcoming fiscal year, we don't, there's not a corresponding one for one decrease in the structural deficit, mm -hmm. right? Because there's all kinds of things built into that deficit, not just straight salaries. And so we don't go from an $825,000 deficit, structural deficit to 
825 minus 235,000, right? It's, yeah. it's not as simple on the math side as that. Mm -hmm. um, so the raises, what, what cancel on the raises does is it lets us um, take a beat, figure out what we need to do to get the city's budget right side up long-term, uh, and then look at how we're gonna move forward after that. Okay, and the 235,000, that's only for a portion of our staff that we're going to get a raise. There's another portion of our staff that haven't didn't negotiate yet for the July raises, and they would also that 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 would be something. If we were going to move forward with this, then we would also need to move forward with talking to the other MOUs that did not negotiate yet, had a one year contract versus a yeah. two year contract. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions, Councilman Holmes? Yes. Well, it's uh, with a heavy heart that I find the city in this particular situation. I would like to point out, however, that uh, other uh, elements of government uh, are experiencing some of the same things, including the state of California, uh, the city of Sacramento, and, and others. <clears throat> so... Uh, Hopefully, we will be able to find a way to uh, catch up with this uh, in in a few months as, as things uh, develop. So, anyway, uh, thank you. I guess we're going to comment to uh, Councilman Mar. Um, so, just to be clear, piggybacking on what our mayor said, uh, there there's not one entity or individual. Um, group or individual here will be getting a raise from that writing starting now forward. July 1st going yeah. forward. That, yeah, that's correct. Is that a fair analysis? Um, yes. Okay, I just want to make that clear. So there's no, we have independent groups. N no one is getting a raise then. Right. Okay. And um, yeah, just also um, addressing what you just said, I spent the week, uh, a night with our city manager at PCWA um, retreat, and there were city managers from all over our area, Roseville, Colfax, Rockland, Loomis, Lincoln. And, um, you know, we're not the only ones who are facing difficulties. So um, anyway, it doesn't make it better. And um, this is very difficult indeed, but um, it, it is a, a hard time. So. Thank you. I would just like to say, um, uh, you know, we did have an opportunity to talk about <clears throat> this issue in closed session, which I won't divulge that conversation since it is closed session. So I'm I'm very well briefed on the issue. Um, it's incredibly unfortunate that we find ourselves in the situation, as I've mentioned before. Um, uh, for whatever reason, we're where we are. The buck stops with us. And, um, you know, I, I accept my responsibility in this whole debacle um, as well. But now times call for very, very difficult and hard decisions. And that's unfortunate, but we are where we are and, and the buck stops with us. And uh, the city has to address this deficit. This is a small way to do that. I recognize that we negotiated salary increases for several of our units. They were counting on those increases because they agreed to the MOU. And I don't like having to negate that because we negotiated in good faith as they did, but the provision exists in the MOUs for this particular reason. And uh, I think that we have to do all that we can. There's a lot more that we need to do. And it's gonna be tough, but we've gotta get through it and um, and we will get through it. So thank you very much. Councilman Sierra Samuels, did you have anything you want to say? Just um, that I'm very sorry that we're in this position. Um, I've made statements before alluding to the fact that, you know, um, I wasn't here when those decisions were made, but I do have that experience of placing your faith in people that should have known what they were doing and it's pretty clear that they didn't so for that i'm sorry and like alice mentioned though i mean i wasn't there then but i'm here now 
to help with this. And I'm hoping that if anything, we've taken away some lessons learned so that we start asking really hard questions, not necessarily getting into the weeds, but really trying to you know, make sure that this doesn't happen again. And I do understand that there are other entities that are going through the same thing that, that we are. So with that, I'm just hoping that we can move forward and, and um, try to just go up from here. Thank you. And I will add my just disappointment with how this all turned out. I'm very frustrated. I mean, work having worked for cities for 15 years, I've been on the receiving end of this in the past for other places that I've worked and it's very discouraging and it's not great for morale and it's very frustrating for everyone involved. Um, I worked really hard to get the salary study done so we could make sure we paid our staff appropriately for the hard work that they do and this was not what we were anticipating when we were negotiating those MOUs and trying to pay our staff appropriately. So this is very disappointing, I think, for all of us. But we do have to make sure we have a balanced budget so that way we can move forward as a city and and I'm, we're going to have to do some serious work to figure out what that plan is moving forward so that way we can make sure that in the future we can move forward with the appropriate salary for our staff and that we're able to give them what they deserve to have as the hard work that they do for us. Um, but unfortunately, we were put in a difficult situation at the end of the fiscal year, right before July 1st, and we didn't have enough time to sort out how to manage this problem before we have to make this decision. So um, I'll join my colleagues and just the take it, we accept the responsibility and we're sorry for having to do this, but we have to do what's best for the city's finances and make sure that we're able to continue um, and have a, a balanced budget moving forward. So I think we'll all agree that we will work very hard as a council to move forward and to make those decisions that need to be made so that way we can be in good shape for next fiscal year. So we'll be working hard between now and then to make sure that, that happens so that our staff can, can, we're able to provide what our staff needs. Is there any other comments? Okay. Is there any public comment? Okay. Madam, we're, we did, uh, just for the purposes of the record, I know that we received um, a public comment in writing. So I'm just okay. mentioning that that was something that was submitted here from Larry Manth with Ms. Dagny. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. okay, I did get that. Okay, is there any other public comment? Okay, then with that, I will bring it back to the council. Well, Madam Mayor, I'll move by resolution to approve the city of Auburn to declare a fiscal emergency, canceling all salary increases. I'll second. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Council Member Dowden Calvillo. Aye. Amara? Yes. Holmes? Aye. Sierra Sammons? Aye. Mayor Riddell Harris? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, with that, that's the end of our agenda. So unless there's anything else, we will adjourn. Thank you.